It is the sweetest gift of nature, and a gift that is a major food item in every Kenyan household. This is the most known and widely used final product of Kenya's sugar industry, an industry that is one of the significant contributors to our country's economic growth. Today across the country, over 6 million Kenyans derive their livelihood from the sugar industry. The development of the sugar industry in Kenya started with private investments at Miwani in 1922, followed by Ramisi Sugar Company in 1927. After independence, the government, driven by a national desire to accelerate social economic development, address regional economic imbalances and increase Kenyan participation in the economy, established six additional factories. Currently, Kenya has 11 operating factories. Four government-owned factories include South Nyanza Sugar Company, Chemilil Sugar Company, Nzoya Sugar Company and Muhoroni Sugar Company, which is in receivership. The private mills are Mumbia Sugar Company, West Kenya Sugar Company, Butali Sugar Mills, Kibos Sugar and Allied Industries, Soin Sugar Company, Sukari Industries and Transmara Sugar Company. The Kenya Sugar Board was established through an act of parliament in 2001. It is the apex body of the Kenyan sugar industry, charged with the mandate of regulating, developing and promoting the industry. The board specifically facilitates the equitable access to the benefits and resources of the industry and coordinates the activities of industry institutions. Sugar Board regulates a very complex industry. It's an industry that has a value chain that moves right from the farm level, uh, production, primary processing, secondary processing, logistics, distribution, export and imports from the world market. It is therefore involving quite a cross-section of players requiring a regulator to mediate and enforce the guidelines and rules that are at play. The Sugar Development Fund was established in 1992 with the objective of creating a revolving fund to finance the activities of the sugar industry in Kenya. To enable it to achieve its mandate, the Kenya Sugar Board manages the Sugar Development Fund by supporting research, cane development, factory rehabilitation and infrastructure development. Over the years, the Sugar Development Fund has grown to become one of the largest sources of funding for the industry. Now, the, in the fund itself specifically draws its revenues from two main sources. Uh, the main source is the sugar development levy, which is uh, a levy that is charged on uh, both imported and locally manufactured sugar. In a nutshell, it's a levy that is charged on all sugar that is consumed in this country, other than the sugar that comes in for industrial use. The second source of funding the fund, of course, then goes that it has to be the loans as they get repaid back. So as we give out loans, we do pick up repayments and that is used to refinance various activities within the industry. If you look at the growth of the sugar industry from 1992 right up to now, the various key performance indicators, quite a bit of it can be attributed to funding that the industry has received from the Sugar Development Fund. Research is considered critical in our country's sugar industry as it is the vehicle through which the industry can develop high sucrose, early maturing and disease resistant varieties suitable for the industry. The Kenya Sugar Board therefore finances the activities of the Kenya Sugar Research Foundation, which is the research arm of the industry charged with the responsibility of conducting sugar research and undertaking technology transfer. In addition, the board constructed a state-of-the-art research facility at Kibos that will not only serve the research needs for Kenya, but also the East African region. In the last 10 years, we have been able to produce 13 new varieties. And these varieties have various traits which are useful to the farmers. They have got high yields. They have also high sucrose content. They are also disease resistant. We have developed and are in the process of rolling out a seed cane policy. This seed can policy will 
ensure that as an industry we have clean, sufficient seed kin from a consortium of uh, varieties that are responsive to our needs, not just today but also in the future. We want to move from a single commodity sector to a multi-product competitive sector. We therefore need varieties that are responsive to this vision that we have for our industry. A variety that will not just enable us to produce sugar, but can also have sufficient fiber for us to produce uh, power and ethanol, among other products. There are over 300,000 sugarcane farmers who are largely based in the rural areas. To help these sugarcane farmers reap maximum benefits from their hard work, we are encouraging establishment of stronger outgrower institutions that are essentially drawing their membership from sugarcane farmers who grow and supply cane to the affiliated or particular sugar factories in their zones. These outgrower institutions act as channels for mobilizing sugarcane farmers and for supply of credit to the farmers. We never used to have permanent houses, we never used to have farmers uh, breeding very good animals, we never used to farm, uh, farmers taking their sons and daughters to very good schools, but this time they are able to do that just because they are benefiting uh, from uh, uh, the price which we negotiate with the miller and that, uh, that makes the economy of this area improve. To enable farmers access affordable credit, the board entered into an agency arrangement with Agricultural Finance Corporation with a view to lending to individual cane growers for cane development. The board has since advanced 1 billion shillings to the Agricultural Finance Corporation for onward lending to sugarcane farmers. We are uh, a link between the government and the sugar industry where we always work hand in hand with the ministry, our ministry, the parent ministry, which is the Minister of Agriculture, in uh, ensuring that there are policies in place that favor the sugarcane farmers. Sugarcane farming has proved to be profitable for the farmers and this has gone a long way in transforming the livelihood of the farmers. Sugarcane has really turned around our living as Maasai farmers. We never had used to have roads, now we have roads. We never used to have electricity, now we have electricity. We never used to have very good schools the way we have. Our schools now in this area are all permanent. This is because of the money we get from sugar growing. To support sugar millers, the Sugar Board has injected substantial funds in the rehabilitation of sugar companies across the country. This year, the board has injected 450 million shillings for the overhaul of Chemilil Sugar Company, which has seen the turnaround of the factory to profitability. The loan through the Sugar Development Fund was utilized to improve key aspects of the factory because quite a number of the areas had uh, degenerated. And uh, specifically, we went into the Kenya area, which is the receiving area for Ken and uh, the gantry structures were revamped. These ones had not been refurbished for more than 40 years. We also went into cane preparation equipment where we invested in a new fibrizer, which is, has improved our cane preparation significantly. Additionally, we went to the bagging section and installed an automatic bag wear with accurate measurements. We do not have to rely on human intervention now to weigh our sugar and that has improved our accuracy and speed in the bagging uh, area. We have also extensively rehabilitated and taken over the running of Muharoni Sugar Factory which is currently under receivership. The strategy we have put in place to ensure that this company recovers and is on sound financial footing to be handed back to the government or the privatization commission of Kenya on behalf of the government is among other things we are undertaking what we call a staff rationalization. This is intended to ensure that employment establishment is optimal. There's the technical restructuring of the company that will involve subjecting the factory to rehabilitation so that the factory starts to function with a higher level of efficiency. The board is also supporting an initiative to enable the industry transit from cane payment based on weight to payment based on sucrose content. 
To achieve this, the board procured a pilot cane testing unit from Zoya Sugar Company, while the European Union is financing the establishment of another unit at South Nyanza Sugar Company. This is going to represent a very, very significant paradigm shift within the industry, and it is going to create a framework where farmers are going to redouble their efforts in terms of investing in good time to get a better return. And it's going to be a key differentiator that is going to reward and give a premium to a better primary producer as a farmer. And it is also going to penalize a farmer that does not engage diligently in cane production. And I believe it is going to provide an incentive that is going to be the sustainable basis for farmers to develop a staying interest in this business of cane production. To improve infrastructure, we are providing grants to the millers to enable them develop and maintain feeder roads and bridges. This is playing an important role in facilitating easy access from the farms to the factories. Our aim is to reduce the cost of production both for the farmer and for the miller. The board also secured funding from the European Union, which has been instrumental in supporting infrastructure improvement and capacity building in the industry. Corporate social responsibility is one of our core values, and as such, we are committed to giving back to the community. Thus, the Sugar Board is supporting a number of projects across the country's sugar belt. These include dispensaries in Western Kenya, which have received funds to purchase beds and install electricity. Kenya currently produces over 500,000 tons of sugar against a national demand of 750,000 tons, saving our country in excess of 250 million US dollars in foreign exchange annually while contributing substantial amounts in taxes to the exchequer. To bridge the gap between supply and demand, Kenya imports the balance from Kamesa countries while it is implementing strategies that will enable the country to be self-sufficient and have surplus for export. We have actually increased the production of sugar, which in essence is saving the country foreign exchange in what would have been imported to meet the deficit that is in the country. The presence of the industry in 11 counties has transformed the fabric of communities and rural economies in the sugarcane belt, with rural businesses and towns depending on the injection of cash derived from sugarcane for transformation. The community and the farmers and overall the area is going to benefit from this industry. This village is now going to go to a town in the next five years. This was an area where there was no development and uh, the area was good for the cane uh, sugar industry. We are doing a road from the Nandi side in Jepsaita to the factory which will reduce the distance from the current 65 kilometers when you go through Kaprengu to about 20-25 20, 20, kilometers when you come direct from the farthest point. This all done with the funds from Butali Sugar Mills. The industry is a source of employment for the local communities, reducing rural-urban migration and promoting rural development through direct participation of the rural families in sugar processing areas. The sector provides direct and indirect employment to about 500,000 people. The factories have also heavily invested in the provision of essential services to the communities surrounding them. These include healthcare, where they have constructed and supported dispensaries that are accessed not only by their employees, but also by the surrounding communities. They have also supported education initiatives either by constructing schools or supporting schools in their respective neighborhoods. Buka Academy, established by Mumia Sugar Company, is such an institution. Buka Academy was built and fully sponsored by Mumia Sugar Company to offer high quality education for it, the children of its employees. Currently, Buka Academy serves the entire 47 counties in the country. But Buka Academy in Mumias is not an exception. 
Across the country's sugar belt are there such schools that have over the years become top national benchmarks of excellence include Chemilil Primary and Chemilil Academy. The industry is also a source of raw materials for other industries. Molasses is a key ingredient in the manufacturing of various industrial products such as beverages, confectionery, spirits and pharmaceuticals. The sugar industry has sufficient molasses to allocate to a business like ours. Producing locally, we are creating jobs within the region. Um, we, we currently have over 230 people employed here in our plant. So we're continually looking at ways to improve not only Kenya's economic uh, stance within the region, but also the communities that surround the organization and how we can improve those communities through employment, through further production of other products that we're currently looking at. But as our sugar industry has experienced rapid growth, it has had its own share of challenges that threaten its survival. These include high cost of production, high cost of inputs, lack of capital, high debt portfolio, diminishing land sizes, poor infrastructure, changing weather patterns and aging equipment. To address these challenges, the Kenya Sugar Board is implementing its strategic objective to enhance sugar industry competitiveness. The industry is venturing into the production of additional high-value products to enhance its revenue base using existing potential to produce sugar-based, molasses-based and bagasse-based products. These include power cogeneration, ethanol production, production of spirits, briquettes and paper. In the lead is Mumia Sugar Company, which currently supplies electricity to the national grid and has already constructed an ethanol plant following the development of the national biofuel policy, which allows for 10% blending of ethanol with petrol. Once that is made attractive for investors, obviously, it will help in terms of reducing in terms of the fuel costs that are there in, uh, in this country, which also result in lowering the motoring costs. We have also gone into water, water bottling because uh, there is plenty of good quality water available, which will also help to increase our, our revenue stream and make us more sustainable and profitable in, uh, in the long run. We are also promoting the establishment of more private factories in the country. One of such ongoing projects is the Kwale International Sugar Company in Kwale County, which is currently under construction. The establishment of this factory is creating a lot of excitement and great expectations from the surrounding community. The factory has strategically shifted away from the reliance on the traditional and widely dependent rain-fed sugarcane production and embraced massive irrigation for production of its cane in a warm coastal climate that facilitates fast maturing of sugarcane, precisely in a period of 12 months. Down here the climate's good, the temperatures are good, the sunlight's good, Everything's good, except we need that water factor to make sure that in the very dry months of January, February, March, we can add the water to keep the cane growing and ensure greater productivity. We can enhance yields by a minimum of 100% increment and therefore ensuring that there's an annual uh, turnover is guaranteed and therefore the justification is, is good. The factory also intends to produce 30,000 litres of ethanol per day and generate 18 megawatts of electricity. The government has also adopted a divestiture program for all government-owned mills to enable the injection of necessary capital, management expertise and modern production technology required to steer the industry to competitiveness. We also do believe that uh, if we move towards the privatization route, then as an industry we will have encouraged greater private sector participation in the industry and with this there are benefits that come with it in terms of uh, efficiency, in terms of uh, governance issues and uh, we are positive that the future of the Kenya sugar industry is bright. Indeed the Kenya sugar industry has a huge potential that has not yet been fully exploited 
Our vision is to transform the industry into a world-class multi-product sugarcane industry by a vibrant local sugar industry that is efficient, diversified and globally competitive.